Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on how I got started making puzzle boxes. And this is the first puzzle box that I ever made when I was 15 years old back in 2013. And I'm gonna show you how this box opens and I'm gonna talk about how I started selling these boxes and where I started and all that good stuff. Okay, so back in, 2015 I finished high school and I needed to either go to college or my idea was start a woodworking business now my parents kind of wanted me to go to college but they agreed they're like okay Jess if you can you know convince us that you know for one year in one year's time you know you can build something that's gonna be sustainable and and you know, you, you don't need to just learn your skills at college, you can learn them on your own. And uh, I just, look, full disclosure, I wanted that so bad because I, I, you know, not to offend anybody out there, but just the whole, the college thing, I'm just, I'm just, I just, uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, <clears throat> but anyways, so I didn't want to go to college and so I was like, I got to get something rolling here. So I was going to a machine shop part time. I would go there like two, three days a week. Um, and then the other few days I would make wood products and I would list them on Etsy, which is an online store for crafters and builders. And so the machine shop actually turned out to be very pivotal in my in my learning and thought process as a puzzle box builder because I learned how to manufacture there. I was running um, very expensive CNC machines and these things were holding like crazy tight tolerances and I could see, it was just a real small shop, like just a few employees, but I could see how the boss operated every everything and how he managed the company, you know, how much product we made, how the shipping was done, you know, all these different things in just this small company. And I could see, you know, this guy running it and it's proved to be very, you know, I, I wouldn't trade that for anything. And let me tell you something. I'm just, I'm very glad that I got to see it firsthand and I got to, to be there for a couple of years on part-time rather than theorize in a classroom, but teach their own. Um, so anyways, on the side though, I was trying to build my woodworking business. So on Etsy, I listed a ton of different items that I just, I was just looking for a buck basically. I was looking to, to use my woodworking skills that I had honed over the years and just turn that into a business. So I was selling bolo ties, I was selling ukuleles, which I made myself. And uh, actually I sold one for 300 bucks. It was really, a really good sounding ukulele surprisingly. But um, uh, yeah, ukuleles, I mean, clocks, basically anything that, you know, I could build quickly, easily, didn't require a whole ton of, oh, I sold a few arts and crafts bookcases for 600 bucks. Um, those were actually a really good product. I drove those all the way down to New York City. Um, those, those were some good cases, but, but anyways, um, so yeah, I was just trying to build this business and I also listed, I made a duplicate of this box, which is, you know, the first puzzle box I ever made. And I listed that too. I was like, Hey, who knows? Maybe somebody will be interested in a box that you have to solve a little puzzle, you know, to get the lid to come open. I don't know. And it sold within like seven days or something like that on August 16th, 2015. And I was like, whoa, and I was like $47.99, it's mine. Except that I had to pay for shipping and you know everything else. So I was like, well, that's really good news. And the seller there, I'm sorry, the, I was the seller. The buyer was um, super, super encouraging to me. He was, he reached out to me, he wrote me a message. It was actually Steve Canfield, who is a very, a uh, well-known puzzle collector, but he wrote me a message and he said, um, you know, I'm really interested in your process. If you could just let me know, 
you know, what, what you do to make these boxes or, or where you sell and just other information. I'm just interested in puzzle boxes as, as a whole. And so that started just the chain of emails back and forth. And I learned a lot through him and he gave me a lot of good advice back in the very beginning. And he bought every single box that I made um, from then on. So he has every single puzzle box I've ever made. And um, I always give him number one in the edition because I'm just, I, it's kind of a good tip of just like, you know, being grateful for, for getting me started down this path and, and believing in me because, you know, back in the beginning, some of my boxes were, were quite rough. Now there's ones that just, just plain work and, and they look nice and they function nice. And there's other ones that if I'm honest, they, they didn't work too good and they might've warped or, you know, there's some issue where I was a little nearsighted and I didn't, didn't know that that was going to be an issue. And, um, you know, but he just supported me through the whole thing. And so I'm grateful for, for customers like him and very many customers are going to be watching this video right now. And I'm just grateful for the whole puzzle community because people are very forgiving and they don't demand more than, than what, you know, a guy can put out. And people just understand that I was learning through the last six years, you know, I'm not just going to go from zero to 100 in, in, you know, overnight. So it's, it's just been a great community to be, to be in. But anyways, so he bought the box. He encouraged me. He was like, Hey, there, Jesse, there is a niche of puzzle box collectors and you could carve out a nice niche for you if you just keep designing new boxes, you work on building them a little bit more complex. Okay, um, so anyways, I was just listening to all this and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna just keep making as many puzzle boxes as sell. And so instantly after that box sold, and, and to be honest, when it sold, I was so happy I had tears in my eyes. <laughs> because you know back then i just really needed a little burst of energy because i needed to believe in the business and believe in, in that i could market my skills as a woodworker and so that was just really pivotal for me selling that first box so i designed another box basically just like this but just slightly modified and I was building it and I was like, I'm going to make myself another $47.99 if this one sells. And it took me like a day or two to make the box. And I was like, this isn't a sustainable business. And so <laughs> I was like, something needs to change. So I ended up figuring out that, um, you know, I could, I could double the price, change some things, make it more efficient to build. And, you know, then I started selling more puzzle boxes and, and I started the whole design process and everything, got the whole ball rolling. And you know, that's the story of how it evolved to what it is today is a topic for another video. But um, yeah, from then on, I just started making more puzzles and, and designing and figuring out that, that people wanted to buy another box if I could design one to top the first one. And you know, they just wanted to collect these things. They didn't actually want to keep much in a puzzle box. They just wanted to enjoy opening it, enjoy putting it on the shelf, enjoy looking at it, picking it up every once in a while, showing somebody else. And so, yeah, basically though, that's how I started this whole, this whole thing. It's been an interesting journey. Basically, if I could just, you know, knowing what I do now versus six years ago, if I could just look back on myself and give myself some advice, I would just say um, you need to you need to figure out what your customer actually needs, what they actually want, and you need to not be afraid of giving them a product that um, that doesn't give a good return for you. So long as it's a good product and you sell it to somebody and you help somebody out and you don't quite squeak out enough to make a living, that's okay because as you just keep giving out value, value will start coming back to you. And as you broaden your horizon and start helping more people, not just one person, you wanna help a lot of different people or, or at least multiple people and people start to see the value that you're putting into the box 
and and the amount at which uh, the, the amount that you value your customer then the value is going to start coming back and um, you know throughout the last six years it's been a lot of putting in more work than I'm that I'm taking I, I'm not I don't have an MBA or anything like that numbers isn't my forte all the time so sometimes I'll sell a, a a hundred puzzle boxes and you know the sh between the shipping the taxes and everything else it turns out being more than what my time is worth you know flipping burgers or whatever but but that's okay because it's it's just kind of building trust with your clients and the puzzle box industry has been phenomenal as far as just online forums and you know, Facebook groups and, and different cliques where where people are just get together, they discuss puzzle boxes, they discuss different builders, and they give us some slack. They realize that not every box we make is gonna be a huge hit. You know, we're gonna make some mistakes sometimes, and it's just forgiving, uh, just a forgiving um, customer base. And I, I wouldn't, I'd be very cautious telling somebody to go into business and start making a profit instantly. You should like basically just break even for a while and just learn the learn what your customer actually wants because in the beginning if you don't have any skills in for your particular customer you're not going to be able to to know exactly what they want. It's it's not just like oh, oh maybe I'm going too deep into the whole um, you know, advice to young entrepreneurs. Okay, so on closing, um, I just want everybody to know that I feel like I am at the height of, of this whole progression. You know, the, this whole puzzle box thing just keeps getting better and better and better. And I get better and better and better at making puzzle boxes. And it's, it's a repetition thing. Um, you know, it's not about every single puzzle box being the best that I've ever made, but the average of the puzzle boxes just keeps getting better. And that's something I really am excited about because I just know that if, if my puzzle boxes get better, you know, the profit is gonna get better as well. And the value to the customer is gonna get better. You know, that's, that's like the, the golden triangle of, of just, the business and where it's taken me so so uh i hope everybody found this video interesting i appreciate everybody watching we just broke 3,000 subscribers which is crazy and uh you know i've made over 100 videos so it's it's nice to have a nice milestone like that to get past um put a lot of time into the videos but uh it's been it's been good and it's been super key for my business too keeping everybody up to date on what's going on in the box office if you like this video please let me know and i'll make a part two covering like you know from my second box all the way to the present so just kind of all the different puzzle boxes that i've made and 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 how that progression looked and and you know all that all that stuff if you guys are interested let me know if you just want to see more of the sundial box which is going into production next week hopefully but either way just let me know what you want to see i appreciate it and i hope everybody has a good day goodbye